We are here to modify the flavor of the Armor Artificer, meaning that while the Iron Man-esque fantasy is great, what else can we do with the subclass? All to help you create a unique character or NPC and stretch and turn those creative gears. Hello Acolytes, welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. Now, before we explore how we will make the Armor Artificer into a Divine Artifact or Skin Collector, what does the subclass actually do? Well, you start out with a ton of abilities. You get proficiency in heavy armor and smithing tools, and then you have a number of spells unique to you that is added to your spell list. Then you can turn in armor that you are wearing into arcane armor that allows you to be able to use it as a spellcasting focus. It can't be removed against your will, and you have a retractable helmet. Cool. And it replaces any missing limbs as if you didn't have enough coolness. I hope you guys understand how uncool I felt saying the word coolness. So honestly, most of these have no mechanical significance, so it can be ignored altogether if you want, and it has no impact on the game, which will come in handy with your flavoring in a moment. If that wasn't enough, however, in the same level you get two armor forms that can switch every long rest. The Guardian form gives you a Thunder Gauntlet attack and a defensive field that gives you temporary hit points. The Infiltrator form gives you a Lightning Launcher attack and your walking speed is increased 5 feet and you get advantage on stealth checks from a dampening field. At higher levels, you can get extra attack and can further boost your arcane armor with multiple artificer infusions, or power-ups if you will. At the highest level, your guardian form gives you a magnetic pull to force enemies closer to you, and in your infiltrator form, creatures hit with your lightning launcher attacks now have disadvantage on attacks against you, and the next attack that hits it has a disadvantage as well as deals extra damage. So now that we know the literal mechanics of this subclass, let's see what happens when we change the flavor text in the these next 10 character concepts. We can start with maybe the obvious choice with the Bond, an artificer that instead of being a tinkerer is imbued with some power of a symbiote. Their armor is one of a living life form, like an ooze or similar creature. But we have used that in a lot of other videos as an example, so let's expand on that. Your bond is with a mimic, that is your personal armor in exchange for a steady supply of food. Or it is a gadabout, a plant-like creature from Spelljammer that helps you breathe. Perhaps you modify it. Or for an undead aesthetic, why not have a boneless wrap itself around you made up entirely of skin? This living skin could be pink like ours, or dragon skin, or furred. Just don't give it a reason to crush you. The same could be said for a dark mantle creature, or a bunch of puppeteer parasites layering you in patches. Ooh, what if a Kawato-like character wrapped itself around you? And now I'm just spitballing ideas, but the premise is that you bond with another creature that doubles as your armor. A great excuse for you to pick up the Find Familiar spell and double your use of this entity. The next flavor modification will be the Crafter, one that leans into their druidic magics or their DIY skills. For those familiar with my Naturecraft Artificer subclass, free on my website, you know what I'm talking about. Your armor being made from plants, trees, vines, bark, or other material that you have foraged instead of forged. Instead of putting together items made out of metal, you make them out of wood. But you may also be in an urban setting where you use trash to make them. On a more magical element, you may use your skills in crafting to make armor made of stone or ice. If we take some elements of our last concept, perhaps it's an elemental that you have bonded with, giving itself as an armor and speaking with you telepathically. Armor made of water or fire that neither wets you or burns you. Harness the power of the natural elements with this concept. And normally the thunder gauntlets and the lightning launcher has thunder damage and lightning damage respectively, but see if it's okay with your DM to change the damage type for a particular concept. But speaking of druidic elements, you may be familiar with their wild shape transforming into animals. Well, with the were beast, you have a partial transformation. Gone is the flavor of armor at all, but instead you get your abilities when you take partial transformation through your lycanthrope or shifter lineage. Your two forms instead are two different animal forms. Your guardian form is where your were bear form that hits with a thunderous punch with its paws, and your infiltrator form is your were cat form that makes you lighter on your feet. Of course, you don't need to use those two forms exactly, but be creative with the animal forms you specialize in. Could be a wear armadillo giving you the defensive field, or your wear electric eel giving you your lightning launcher. 
then empowering these transformations by adding infusions and abilities to them. In fact, in the Druid class, it states that when you take your animal forms, you absorb all items into your form as well. So maybe when you take partial animal form, you also partially absorb your items. Absorbing a lightning cannon into your arm that replaces one of your wear monkey hands, or your breastplate becoming the skin of your wear rhino form. Which leads us to our next concept where I want to focus in on the text, an armorer modifies armor to function almost like a second skin. Well, what if we took that literally? With the non-armor, your armor has become you. Taking heavy inspiration from Doctor Doom, where his skin literally turns into metal, you're not wearing the armor, you are the armor. Perhaps you have been cursed or afflicted with some sort of elemental lycanthropy. That is a weird concept where you are slowly turning into a creature of metal or stone. In real life, there is a disease called fibrodysplasia, where your tissue inside your body actually turns into bone. And not to make light of the terrible disease that many people suffer from, but in a similar way, your skin could also turn into bone. In a similar vein, we know that the armor replaces any missing limbs. So in essence, you become a cyborg or a bone board or a rock board, there are parts of you are now this other material that you now can look like anything. So what if those parts of you were parts of other creatures? With the Frankenstein, we find a creature spliced together either before or after death. On one hand, you could have been revived by replacing your organs and limbs with other parts of other creatures, a hand of a Bahir that shoots lightning, or another hand of an Aeorian Reverser with a force punch to kind of go in line with your other abilities. On the other hand, you could have made these modifications yourself, sacrificing your limbs for better ones. Your infusions work in a similar way by adding an eyeball here or a finger there, working to improve yourself with an eldritch form of perfection. If you really like to kind of play with that goriness, I would also check out the Splicer Warlock on my website. If you don't want to completely let go of the mechanical side of things, however, have your Frankenstein monster also integrate mechanical limbs alongside their Eldritch ones. In the subclass text, it describes the armor as arcane armor. But what if we take that literally? With the mage armor, we find armor of similar nature to the spell of the same name. You're able to don or doff the armor as an action, so essentially flavor it as casting a spell and covering yourself with an illusory armor or armor made of magic or eldritch energies. As you level up, you are able to tweak the spell and empower it for bonus abilities. The Guardian and Infiltrator armors could be two separate spells that you prepare each day that changes the way that your armor looks. And don't forget that as far as aesthetics go, you could have two completely looking armors for each form from different categories that we've covered. If you want to cast one spell a day for your guardian form, but then the next day rely on your boneless to help you give you more of a sneaky infiltrator form, you could totally do that. But speaking of armor that isn't physical, we see the mind armor, one that uses psionics to create a buffer and activate abilities, powering your punches with psychic punches and laser beams, <laughs> telekinetically increasing your movement for being light on your feet, and and could seemingly be wearing commoner's clothes, but to the villain's surprise when attacking you, you have a different kind of protection. Maybe even have a shield that telekinetically orbits you as a protective armor. Each of your infusions are your mental powers at work, buffing and aiding your allies and you in the process. But why not have your armor do all of the work? instead of just some of it. With the Jaeger, instead of a regular breastplate and helmet, you are an entire mechanized suit that walks by itself with you in its cockpit. Might be the easiest to play a small creature like a gnome or halfling that plays a medium creature with the suit, but they can jump in and out of this Jaeger and have it follow you around when you're not using it. It just won't be able to take actions unless you are physically inside of it. Also a great excuse for your water dependent races to be inside their armor that is also filled with water acting as kind of a land submarine. But you may also find it fun to jump inside inanimate objects in a similar way. Jaeger a large pot as your armor, which is actually taken from a Patreon member of the channel, Kaleidoscope, thank you, as it is their current player or current character that they are playing. If you want to support this channel in a similar way and get inside scoops and help me make videos, you can follow the link to my Patreon in the description below. But other animated objects that you could Jaeger might be a barrel, a wardrobe, a cage, a grandfather clock, or any other fun pieces of furniture that you can give a bit of personality to. Speaking of Jaegering, this could also be stepping inside of a golem. We have the stone golem, iron golem, snow golem, clay golem, or crystal golem. For the next one, we look at the concept I like to call the plot armor. 
Not because they never die, but because they have a deity invested into their survival. Much like the mage armor concept, a higher being bestows upon you gifts in the form of protective heavenly energies where motes of light fly around you, or a floating scroll that reads you a celestial protection, warding you and dampening enemy attacks. It could be also that you are given armor made of celestial material covered in divine rites or sigils. I could also see this being like the story of Prometheus, who shaped the race of man out of clay. Perhaps God shaped you out of clay and you take inspiration from the clay golem or elemental ideas that we've discussed before. Or perhaps you got your armor off of a being that was the epitome of law, like a merit or a modron. In that sense, the armor that you use doesn't have to be created by you, but rather stolen from another powerful entity, obviously being used as a great plot device. But speaking of creatures from other planes, I give you the positive and the negative. One who draws their magic from polar opposite powers. You may notice from your guardian form and infiltrator form that they're two sides of a coin. So what if you draw the healing and power from your guardian form from the positive planes and your speed and sneaking from the negative planes? Or another example, your guardian form from the magic of the Feywild and your infiltrator form the magic of the Shadowfell or the Seely and the Unseely Court of the Feywild or just dark and light sides of your own character. Think about the juxtapositions and opposites in your character besides just attack and hide, and you might find a very evocative character. So tell me in the comments about your artificer characters or ideas. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. Check out my other creative subclass videos here. And in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off the table. See you in the next one.